Today we're going to do a Pokemon Crystal Run with our first starter, Typhlosion. When you look at Fire Top in Johto, it's actually really good, especially when you consider the weaknesses that they have. Things like water, rock, and ground, all those gym leaders are found over in the Kanto region, and by the time you make it to that part of the game, everything's pretty trivial. If we look at the stats, you can see that Typhlosion has a very balanced spread. It's got really good stats. The things that stick out are the special attacks and speed and those are just very good and now we can take a look at that learn set we're level up things are pretty standard there's pretty much all normal and fire moves here and most of this stuff's gonna be pretty irrelevant pretty fast but when you look at the TM learn set it learns a lot of things but the main thing here and I'll talk about it a little later in the video is how good the coverage of the elemental punches are you don't get the ice top coverage from ice punch but getting thunder punch and a pretty early fire punch is pretty game-changing and it made this run be a lot better than I thought. Now it's worth noting, I'm not showing it here. You do learn Flamethrower via the Move Tutor, but by the time you get access to that, you're pretty close to 60 anyway, because Typhlosion, my friends, is in the medium slow leveling group, and that's pretty much my favorite leveling group. I think it's really good. It gets you a lot of levels early, and overall that's gonna help us out a lot. And I've said it a couple of times before, I don't show the full learn set on my sidebar as the video's rolling, so now's your opportunity to pause it, look over it. If you're interested in that kind of thing because I do condense things down because it just wouldn't really fit on the screen that well. There's been a lot of debate, a lot of questions I've asked over my previous runs, and today my friends we're going to see a new style a little bit. I'm going to officially end the timer at blue and then we're just going to do red as an optional battle. It will count a little bit on the tier list, we'll get into that later, but we're still going to be using things like hidden power and return, and for this run, honestly, Typhlosion doesn't really need hidden power, but just for the sake of its versatility, I did use the ice top hidden power for this run. Overall, there's a couple of little modifications I made to the run. They're not really a big deal. I did things like I added my name to the starting name list. Not really a big deal, just a quality of life thing. And the second thing I did was that I removed the complete darkness from caves just because I know the layout like the back of my hand. And I feel like at this point, you might as well just remove it just to make things look better in a video. My previous videos felt like they've been a little bloated, so I'm going to do my best to make this condensed and have a really great experience today, so let's not waste any more time. But before we jump into the run proper, I'd like to quickly say that likes and comments really help out a ton. And if you just want to help the channel out a little bit, whether you're someone new, maybe you're someone who just doesn't normally think about that sort of thing, or maybe you're a returning subscriber like Zachary Heflin, this week I want you to answer a question, do you think Typhlosion will be the best starter? I know it's not going to be Meganium, it's like a meme that it's so bad, but Feraligator is the speed running choice for this game, so I don't know how it's going to stack up, but I will just say that Typhlosion had a really great run here. So with that out of the way, I think you could just sit back, relax, grab a Sodi Pop, and let's just skim through this all real quick. Now let's take it into that first rival battle. Obviously we're going to be going against the water type Totodile. And here, all you can really do is use Tackle. I used Leer two times. Let me just say it was a mistake. You should just use Leer once, just based on how much defense it loses. But anyway, it's not a hard battle. We can just keep moving on. Now overall in this run, there are quite a few things that I have refined and different strategies that work just overall better in the confines of using real time as a metric. These things basically just boil down to things like management in terms of money, HM users, repels, and power points at certain parts of the game, but we'll kind of go over them when we reach that section. Just like I started the trend with the last video, I'm going to name my rival three question marks because I'm just excited to bring you guys this run, and this is the only way I know how to express it. After making it to Violet City, I am going to be going into the Sprout Tower today because I was looking at it and you do need some extra levels to make some things consistent. Now overall, there's a ton of Bell Sprouts here who would have thought with the name of Bell Sprout Tower, but I have Amber, I'm a fire type, it's not too bad. We hit level 13 at the end, and I am a little bit over leveled here, because already at this early stage in the game, I battled a couple of extra trainers that I didn't need to, and it's just, it's one of those things. I made some mistakes, and if it cost me too much, I was going to reset, but this run, it was pretty good. I ended up kind of overcoming these little early mistakes like that. And with that said, I think we can take a look at the first gym leader, Faulkner. I 
I initially thought that level 13 was key here because it puts the first Pidgey in a one-shot range, and since we're dealing with the infamous Mud Slap today, I didn't want to get hit since it's super effective, and I figured that he would prioritize it. But when we look at the Pidgeotto here, he just uses Gust. So, admittedly, I don't know Gen 2 as well as Gen 1, especially under the hood and AI type stuff. I don't know why it didn't use Mud Slap there. I'll look into it on my own time. But overall, this is very quick, and that's the first badge already down. I tossed Professor Elm's egg in the box, and I wasn't fortunate. I didn't see a bell sprout on my way to Violet City, but I did encounter one after. Something I have learned, and I spent like 20 minutes in the last couple of videos talking about Ilex Forest, but we're done with that. Here, bell sprout for your cut user. Just be done with it. And let's get past Union Cave, and I guess talk about Hiker Anthony, one of my favorite trainers. And in this run, he's really not too bad. I even get hit with a rock move, and we kind of just shrug it off real easy. And today, I'm not so sure that Hiker Anthony would be a good gym leader because we take care of him fairly easy. Normally he's kind of a menace. I always like to mention Hiker Anthony, but let's just move on. I think we could just skip straight ahead to Bugsy. But I guess it's worth mentioning that I actually go left today. We battle Bug Catcher Josh. He has a Paris. If you can't one shot it, it has a very high chance of putting something annoying on you like a status condition. But since we do have fire and it's double weak to it, we can just burn that thing to the ground and we can just continue on. Now let's take a look at the gym. And there's going to be no suspense here. We already know what happens. Uh, he's got bug tops. I mean, two of them are a, a Kakuna and a Metapod. What do you want me to say? They're already like the weakest Pokemon in existence, and here I am doing super effective damage. Let's just move on. How about that? As for the rival battle, as much Gen 1 as I play, it doesn't feel right to me still to just be able to one-shot Ghastly with a special move. I'm used to special being a unified stat, so stuff like this really catches me off guard, especially during my blind playthroughs. And the only thing that can really threaten you in this fight is if maybe the Croconow gets, I guess, lucky, but here it goes for Rage a couple of times. I set up a couple of Leers, and that means my tackle can take it out. I do take a Water Gun, but overall, I haven't even really hit half health in this run yet, so it doesn't really matter. And there's a Zubat at the end. It's Zubat. We're done with this. Now time for the next little thing that's kind of simple that saved me a lot of time. You know I love the Psyduck in Ilex Forest, but it's just not that good. I've, I've harped on it. But anyway, here I buy eight escape ropes. We've already been through that. There's eight time saves in the run where it's just really good. And now I buy 10 repels and I'm going to be repelling all the way through Ilex Forest. Now let me just break it down real quick. At night, you have a 10% chance to encounter Psyduck. It can learn all the water HMs and strength. It's a very good HM dumpster Pokemon, but a 10% chance, it's just not good enough, and you're just wasting a ton of time, and that's all I really say about it. And you can see that when I get into Ilex Forest, I immediately use a repel, and I do have one caveat here. I allow myself one little treat just to see if I can hit that jackpot. The repel that you use will run out pretty much right at the very end of chasing the far-fetched around, and I don't use another repel yet. Instead, I'll just take whatever encounters I can get because I'm going to leave Alex Forest this run to get the charcoal anyway. So I get a Weedle. I don't get it. We make it out of there. And like I just said, we pick up the free charcoal. Pretty good. Boost fire moves. Doesn't really require a whole lot of explanation. But when I put it on, you can see that it appears over the Sprite. I also have dynamic damage ranges for damaging Sprites. I also show held items. So that's just pretty cool. That's some tech that I got working a few months ago on stream. So pretty cool. Cool. If you scroll down and type in pretty cool, I'll type back pretty cool. The only other thing to note is that I do pick up Headbutt. It's a really solid, it's no body slam, but it's a really solid early to mid game normal just general damage move. It's pretty good. We learn it and now we can move on to Golden Rod. Now something I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to highlight where you use your escape ropes. The first time is right here in the underground section. You battle the couple of trainers, you get your haircut, you pick up the coin case, and you can just use escape rope. It doesn't save a lot of time, but it does save quite a few seconds. I think it's worth mentioning that's where I use my first escape rope. Now we're going up to the next route. Now when I pick up Kenya here, this is like a small little optimization I made. As soon as I get Kenya, I swap it to my second slot because you'll be using fly a turn. And if you're having to scroll down an extra two or three spots and you kind of lose track where Kenya's at, it really can add up. I think this could cost you minutes if you don't do this. And you guys didn't think it would be a Pokemon Crystal video unless I mentioned my 
my man, Juggler Erwin. He's got the level two Voltorb, and I got a little bit more respect for Erwin out here because I just did the Voltorb run not that long ago, and he's just out here holding it down with his level two Voltorb. I gotta have respect for this man. So shout out to Juggler Erwin. Keep doing what you do, brother. And I do think it bears repeating that this path on the right is just so much faster than going through National Park. Forget Dig. If a Pokemon learns Dig, just don't get it. You don't need Dig. Stop getting Dig. Stop going through National Park. Go this way. It's much faster. I promise you. After we teleport back, I can go to the Pokemart and we can pick up two very important TMs. Now first, at this stage, you can already pick up the TM for return. It's very helpful just to go ahead and get it out of the way. You'll have it in your bags and it won't be very long before it's out damaging headbutt. Now the second thing, and you'll see me fumble my money here. I had to sell a couple of extra things, but getting both Fire Punch and Thunder Punch is just kind of crazy good coverage for this early in the game, on top of them just being really powerful moves. This was kind of one of the challenges for the run, was to be able to scrounge up enough money to be able to buy all the repels I need, all the escape ropes I need, and then be able to go ahead and get both of these TMs that cost 3000 a piece without sacrificing too much time, and I was just a little bit off, but I don't think it really mattered too much. But now Typhlosion's pretty much set up to dominate this game. And we're going to see this coverage come in handy a lot coming up. And I don't really know who I'm speaking to with this. This is just little, little nuggets of information I have found from running the game a lot. But you can take the top path in Whitney's Gym. You can avoid all the trainers but this one at the end. And it really does save you a lot of time, especially if you don't need the battles. As far as Whitney goes, you might think I might have some trouble here. And as far as the Clefairy goes, one fire punch, it's down, we can move on. But the vaunted mill tank, it has rollout. We're weak to rock. What's gonna happen here? I let loose a fire punch, take it pretty low, and then it uses rollout. Wow, 10 damage. That's pretty cool. And we just take it out in the next turn. And just like that, Whitney's down. And we get what I feel like is the best badge in the game, given that extra boost in damage to normal type moves, uh, return in general. We know how strong that is. I think it's a really good badge to get. And I'm really, at this stage in the game, I don't know about you guys, but I'm already pretty impressed with how Typhlosion's just kind of cruising through it. Now let's talk about some stuff on the software side of things. Now here on Route 37, you can pick up the magnet. It's on Sunday, so we'd be fine, but I did make an improvement I got with Scott, and now, depending on your location, you can change the time of day, or more importantly, the day itself, to pick up some key items. The brothers and sisters give you all sorts of held items, and it's just kind of tedious. The old way to do it was to just pause the time, and then just kind of edit the day real quick and then continue the run. It was very archaic. But the main thing here is I do pick up the magnet. It's really not that key to the run, but it does help in a couple of spots. Now let's pick back up in the burnt tower, and this is the last time that I'm going to be showing the rival, and you'll see why. Now never mind that we can just one-shot the haunter. Let's see what happens when he brings in his answer to my fire type. Now we have thunder punch, and it's a one-shot. So any challenge that was potentially presented by the rival here is just now trivialized. The only other thing to say about this fight is that I use the wrong move on the Magnemite, I get confused, that kind of cost me a little bit of time, but overall, let's just wave goodbye to the rival. Now afterwards, you wake up the legendary Beast Trio. This is where you use the second escape rope. Now this is future Matt, I had to redo some audio because there was some tech issues, but I do forget, later in the video, I forget one escape rope spot, and it's because I skipped the rocket takeover section, but during that part, you do use one of those in the basement after that, but I forgot to mention it. At the gym, I'm always kind of studying speed runs. I'm looking over maps. I'm trying to find little tricks and time saves. And I did not know that you could skip Morty's second trainer here until I saw the map for myself. And I played these games on release in the year 2000, and I've played them quite a lot. And to me, it's just really cool that there's always little things like this to learn. As far as Morty goes, the first two Pokemon I can just one shot really easy with a fire punch. They don't get a chance to do anything. There's no curse shenanigans today and I'm pretty grateful for that. Now the only thing that could cost you some time here or even potentially threaten a reset is if the Gengar hits that hypnosis because you cannot one shot it. Here it just misses, it goes down like the dog that it is and overall I'm able to sweep the rest of the fight with fire punch and that's another badge down. It's looking pretty easy. So you might be thinking if I don't get Psyduck what do I actually do? Now here in Olivine I pick up three great balls just to answer that question in a second and if you play perfect you only need 16 super repels, but I'm rarely perfect, so I do buy 17 of them here. I finish up with the lighthouse, I take the shortcut drop to get the rare candy without doing an extra battle, and this is where you use your next a 
escape rope. Next, we're gonna go into the house next to the Pokemart. I should have done this on the way down, but it is what it is. I don't really have an excuse, but here we can get the good rod. And what this allows us to do is catch a Krabby. Now, normally you get better luck than this. It takes me uh, quite a few times to fish one up, but if you play it smart like I do here, you could just make your selection, your good rod. So when you hit select, you can just keep using it a little bit faster and eventually you'll get a Krabby. Do not use a special move on this thing. This thing has about negative three special and even a double resisted move will kill it. So just don't. And overall, this is going to allow you to use Whirlpool, Strength, and Surf. But Waterfall, it cannot learn. I guess crabs cannot go up waterfalls. And we'll talk about the solution to that in a second. Well, probably not a second, probably a few minutes, but you know what I mean. And from there, we're taking our Johto version of our very brisk swim. We can see Cyanwood in the distance. It's a very nice day. And now, I think it's about that time we take a look at Junk brother and see what he's got going on this week as for primate there's a decent chance to one shot it i don't get it here it could do some damage that could cause some potential problems but here it just uses a leer we take it out in the next turn and now there's a water type in the back it does have surf but i outspeed i have thunder punch and here i just one shot it likely it would be a two shot but you outspeed and you could do more damage than it so you'd win no matter what pretty much and you don't even need to use the magnet here this fight looked really hard on paper and when you kind of figure everything out it's just honestly it's not that bad afterwards you get fly from chuck's wife and i like how she just hands it to you and she's like good he was getting fat anyway and she just flies off like that now with fly in hand we can do some backtracking there's two rare candies i'm not going to show the golden rod one but in violet city there's one rare candy we'll get that but there's also a pp up in violet city i don't pick it up and originally i was like hey this is just going to save me some time i don't really need the power points but what i have found they're doing a lot of playthroughs of crystal is that if you just pick it up get some extra pp then during the most intensive moments of the game specifically the rocket takeover of the radio tower you can just kind of manage everything well and you can make it through there without having to heal because you have to go through a ton of trainers and not having to visit the pokey center does save a quite a bit of time it saves more time than picking up this pp up is what i'm trying to say at the end of the day next up is the lake of rage i get to knock the teeth out of a gyarados with a fire top and that feels pretty good and then i pick up all the goodies from here including hidden power and now it's time for the best part of the game and really the only thing to say about this filler arc here is that you can use another escape rope when you're done with it. And as far as price goes, this is where you really see the, the combination of Thunder Punch and Fire Punch just doing work. There's so many times where it's like, well, I'm a fire type, I'm weak to this. Oh, hey, I got Thunder Punch and you can just take care of things. But it's price. He's not that great anyway. And then after delivering the medicine back to Jasmine, that's another escape rope opportunity. And I guess it's time to say that I didn't have to hold off on Jasmine. I did just to have guaranteed one shots and as far as the battle goes that's exactly what it is she does send out that steel X second because she wants to hide that little puny and pathetic magnemite in the back but nothing can save her from all this fire damage coming her way and that's seven badges down my friends when that's done we get the privilege of doing about 47 different rocket battles that are all got level 22 pidgeys but i'm going to save you guys the trouble from having to look at that the only thing to really note here is that we get access to that pink bow and i know you can get pink bow on tuesday on the very first round of the game but typhlosion doesn't need it you can just get a free one from our old friend mary here and let me just say doesn't this pink bow just really bring out the color in typhlosion's eyes we're gonna be swapping i did learn return we kind of skipped over that part but it's doing a lot of damage right now and i think we'll just rely on its little basic damage since we're starting to out level everything by a lot it's a good general move and it's a good general item to use next up it's time for vitamins this is something i did in the Iggly buff run uh, and then I carried it over to the Tyranitar run and I think it was really helpful. The only reason I could think of that you wouldn't want to buy vitamins to kind of supplement your stats is if you were just really saving up that money maybe to get a move tutor move but I think you'd be fine because the Elite Four gives you so much money anyway but I don't know I haven't tested it we don't need a move tutor move this run. Four proteins, four calciums and we're out. Now we're headed towards the last Johto gym leader and a common complaint you would see from a anonymous random internet user is with hidden power eyes you're just making claire and lance easy don't you want to give them a chance to be hard and let's just take a look at claire brother i'm going to be using hidden power eyes but let me just say this it, this fight doesn't
doesn't matter. Even though the, the Kingdra has served, this battle's easy. I could go straight return here. I could kick Hidden Power Ice off a ledge, never even use it, take a piss on it, and this battle would still be easy. So I, it doesn't really matter. It just makes things faster. It doesn't make things harder to not use Hidden Power. Some runs, yes, definitely. But all you would do is just waste real life time, over level it, and just use return anyway. But that's my thoughts on it. Maybe I got into a little bit of a tangent. Maybe I raised my voice a little bit. I didn't mean to. Come back, anonymous internet user, next week so you can see me use Hidden Power Ice on Lance and Claire and smile the whole time that I'm doing it. This is the first time that you get to see the hurt sprite for Typhlosion. I spent a lot of time on this feature and Typhlosion was just so good that we really don't get to see it hurt at all. And, and I'm not going to spoil anything. We may not even get to see it faint this entire run. After that, I lied to some dude about loving my Pokemon, pal, strategy, whatever he wants to hear, whatever gets me the badge. And when you walk out and walk back in, you get a free Dratini here. And this is key because this is the replacement. Since Krabby cannot learn Waterfall, Dratini can. This is your last HM dumpster of the run. And overall, doing it this way, everything that led up to this makes it much more consistent. Psyduck, he's out. Friendship with Psyduck ended. Krabby and Dratini are in. Now we can just jump ahead to Victory Road. I'm not going to show the rival battle. We'll let him walk up to us, then we'll cut him off. And the only thing I really want to say here is that I'm not using Earthquake. It's just not needed. Typhlosion is just really powerful, and there's no, pretty much no battle in the entire game where I say, hey, Earthquake would make this fight a lot better. And that's why we're not going to be using it today. It's a great move, but a lot of times in my Gen 2 runs, I just find that Earthquake's just kind of useless. I guess a weaker Pokemon could use it, but the strong Pokemon just don't seem to need it. And I think with that out of the way, we can just take a look at the Elite Four, go through most of it kind of real quick. As far as Will goes, there's not much to say. I don't even need Hidden Power for this fight, but I do mix it in. For the Zatus, you have your choice of Thunder Punch or Ice Punch. For Executor, you have your choice of Fire Punch or Hidden Power. You got Thunder Punch for the Slowbro. You just have everything covered. Overall, it's a pretty quick battle. Pretty satisfying. We can move on to Uncle Koga. And even though he has a bunch of bugs and Thunder Punch and Fire Punch pretty much cover everything, there is a point in this battle where things actually get kind of close. Now on the Muck, it uses Venom like it tends to do and I kind of start missing a little bit then I get hit with toxic now after I finally get the muck to go down the poison is starting to tick up you see the crowbat use double team and overall he's stalling as much as he can and you're on the clock with toxic because it's pretty much doubling every single turn thankfully I'm pretty healthy enough I probably could have survived another tick but I don't miss on the venom moth and I take it out but if I were to miss maybe it uses double team and I miss again I would have had my first reset here, but that doesn't happen. Typhlosion, keeping it going strong. Next up, uh, we have to use two rare candies for Bruno because I was not happy with these damage ranges, and there really wasn't another way to do this. I probably could have saved one rare candy because 53 was the number I was shooting for, but I had done some extra battles earlier, and it pushed me over that limit, but I was just kind of on the real life clock here, and I didn't want to deviate from my strategy too much. I didn't really catch this as I was playing it live. And I got to say up front that maybe it's just me, but why is Hitmontop so bad? Look how little damage it does. It's not like Typhlosion's like a defensive wall or anything, and it just does like, like it tickles me. Is it just me or is Hitmontop one of the worst Pokemon? Onyx is in next. It doesn't get a hit on me, but even if it did, Onyx has about four attack and it wouldn't do anything anyway. And the real problem, the reason why you want to get the ranges on this candy is for the Machamp. Now, if you let it get off maybe two rock slides, you might be in trouble and you have to concede at least letting it use one. And honestly, you can see by the damage that Rock Slide does that maybe I overprepared for this one a little bit because I expected it to do a lot more and it didn't. And it really wasn't that bad. And as for the rest of the fight, it's whatever. I kind of fumble my moves a little bit. With the special split in this generation, sometimes I mess up my move selection. I could have used a better move here and there. I could have saved some turns, but it doesn't really matter. Or does it? Now the Hitmonlee used Swagger on me. And when we get to the Hitmonchan, it uses the move and I'm confused. I hurt myself. I take another move. I'm down to 25 health and I'm pretty much thinking this is how it ends. My first reset on Bruno. Pretty much karma for all the trash talking I've done in generation one. But miraculously, I hang on with just eight HP on the brink of death and I bring this one home. Stay bad, Bruno. As far as Karen goes, this was a fight that I really didn't know how to handle. I kind of just got as strong as I could and I just kind of winged it. You have 
have great matchups kind of hidden in the back, but the Umbreon's just a complete tank, and if you take too many sand attacks, it could be pretty bad, and it looks pretty bad in this one. It looks like Return is not going to be a two-shot. That's unfortunate, but what's even more unfortunate is I take a sand attack. I even get confused and hurt myself for good measure, but remember guys, Gen 2, and I guess onward, sand attack only lowers your accuracy to 75% rather than that awful 66% like it does in Gen 1, so one sand attack is not the end of the world. Eventually I connect and we get to move on. Now I think the most fortunate part of this fight is that for whatever reason, and like I said earlier, I don't know Gen 2 under the hood that great, the Gengar decided not to use Curse. I'm pretty sure Curse would have pretty much made me have to reset here, but it just goes for Lick and I take it out for free and pretty much the only problem I have right now is just a slight little accuracy debuff. From there, you got Murkrow. Murkrow has got to be the most frail little piece of paper I've ever seen in my life. I'm pretty sure any move that I have would one-shot it, and I don't miss, so that's good. And in the back is Houndoom. This is arguably the one spot where you could say, hey, Earthquake could save a turn, but the time you run around the victory road, you pick it up, you go into the inventory, you replace a move with it, uh, you might as well just waste an extra turn using Return here. It does stall out just a little bit, but that's fine, because in the back, she's trying to hide that vile plume from this fire punch, and brother, sometimes you just gotta take that punch to the jaw, just like this vile plume does and that's Karen down and after the fight I heal up all that good stuff and this is the one spot in the entire run where I actually have to use the magnet and I don't even think I had to but we use it we got that nice little magnet around our neck and now we can just take a look at the champion Lance And just like the wise Karen says, hidden power ice, thunder punch, it doesn't matter what you use, it's the perception of people, or whatever Karen says. You know what I'm getting at with this. This battle is trivial, and there's gonna be those stands out there that's gonna be saying, well, hidden power ice made this trivial. Brother, just like I said earlier, we could just use return, and it would be just the same. Now, we use the magnet here for one reason, and one reason alone. It's because it puts Charizard in a much higher one-shot range. I think about a 70% chance to one-shot it. It's not really needed, but it does just save a little bit of time. And he's already sent out all the Dragonites except for this one at the end. I don't know why he's trying to hide this one in the back, but he is, and we have Hidden Power Eyes. Doesn't matter. That's it. The Elite Four is down. And so far, and I will say this during my practice and all that kind of stuff, when I got to this optimized run, Typhlosion has got to be one of the most surprising Pokemon I've ever played. Not even just because it's good, it's like dominant. And I know I have some new tech and some new stuff that I've been learning about the game, but that alone isn't everything. I think Typhlosion is just a really solid Pokemon, and I'm interested to see how it does towards the end of the game. But that's all for Johto, and we're gonna really quick, we're gonna cliff note Kanto like we always do. In Celadon City, I'm a free man. Today we're passing Curse. We're gonna be picking up leftovers before we go down to Erica. That's not important. We're not gonna show these underling gym leader fights because you already know how Kanto is. It's just trivial. And I know what you might be thinking. I hear you barking, big dog. If I don't like Curse, why don't I just not use it? And the only alternative to not using Curse for most Pokemon is gonna be, hey, let's just level up 10 extra levels or 15 or 20. And since the most optimal way to get experience is to battle trainers, that means you're just going to spend a ton of time just battling stuff that's already so much lower level than you. The problem, the main, the crux of the problem here, guys, is that everything is so under leveled in Kanto, except for red. Red's like 100 levels higher than everything else. It just doesn't make for good, it, it doesn't feel good to play, and it probably doesn't feel good to watch, so that's why we're doing it. I don't have to justify myself to you. Stop trying to fight me. And the last thing we'll really say about Kanto is that it feels really weird that my best move to use on Macargo is Thunder Punch. You would just think this thing would be a ground type or something like that, but it's not, and it just turns out that Thunder Punch one-shots it, and that just feels weird. It feels icky, you know what I mean? Finally, we get to blue, and there's been no changes to our learn set, and we're very well equipped to handle this fight. All it takes for the Pidgeot is a single Thunder Punch, and we're moving on just like that. As far as Rhydon goes, I think it's really nice that it has 69 special defense, but that's just not going to cut it today, bud. Hidden Power Ice comes in clutch. And I could watch this 1,000 times on repeat and never get bored. I love seeing a Gyarados get one shot by an electric move, especially if it's a punch to the mouth. As far as 
as Alakazam goes, I've already said this a few times, but it just feels so weird to me that a flamethrower can so easily one-shot it, especially because it's just so defensively bulky against special attacks in Gen 1, but that's really all there is to say about it. Arcanine's the only thing I really don't have super effective damage for, so it takes a little bit to take it down, a couple of returns, but it's really not that much of an issue, and all this time, Blue is just trying to hide that executor in the back, but I see you, buddy, and I got a flamethrower coming right for you, and that's the battle. Typhlosion finishes Blue with a time of 1 hour, 9 minutes, and 25 seconds, and that's honestly a pretty crazy good time. And if you're just kind of confused if I still haven't hit home the point of why I'm ending the time at Blue, then you can discuss it down in the comments. I've already went over it in multiple videos, but you notice that the timer's still going. It's because we are going to fight Red, and we're going to see what the best strategies are. The main thing, and what's going to help a Pokemon out the most on the tier list, if I could just go straight to Red and beat it, especially without having to default to those curse rest strategies. So without further ado, I think we just take a look at Red and we kind of see how it goes. I do have a strategy, but my fear is that I'm underleveled. Now, Return has a really high chance to one-shot the Pikachu. We take it out, no problem. Red chooses to send out Espeon next. I go for a flamethrower. It does heavy damage, but not enough to one-shot. And Espeon does set up Reflect for his team. And in Gen 2, Reflect is gonna last for five turns, but it works for the whole team. And we take it out right after that. Next up is pretty much what you would think would be the big problem. It's Blastoise. But if you're at full health like us, we've already discussed this it's gonna use rain dance because it knows that surf can't one shot you anyway and luckily with the magnet thunder punch is in a very comfortable two shot range which means that we go first and it's never gonna get a chance to damage us now we get to the real problem it's snorlax it's honestly it's got some really insane special defense just look at that and I don't really notice it I'm fishing for like a burn here or maybe something like that and even though I do get a crit it just doesn't matter I get paralyzed from the body slam and and I just get beaten down and that's the first reset of the run but I'm fine with it because this is the optional post game red fight. On the next attempt things are kind of the same but this time the Espeon decides to go for a psychic and we do take some pretty heavy damage for it before the Blastoise comes in. And we've already talked about Blastoise. Uh, I just crit here and take it out. It wouldn't really do damage to us anyway. I don't think it would have went for a surf even at this health range and now the Snorlax comes in once again. And this time I do go for return but Reflect is still up so you can see how how pathetic the damage is and I try to go toe to toe blow for blow with the Snorlax and it's just not happening we have yet another reset but I do linger just a little bit so you guys can take a peep at this nice little funny looking fainted Typhlosion here on the third attempt I do swap over to leftovers for my held item now I have mentioned how Pikachu it's not a guaranteed one shot and here I do get kind of unlucky it does miss thunder and overall it just goes for two full restores but I will say that if you took a charm here it would likely just be an instant reset because that would be really hard to overcome as for the Espeon our luck turns around a little bit I get a crit now this is pretty big because that means we're not gonna take any chip damage and more importantly we're not gonna see a reflect set up this time Blastoise without the magnet it's a little dicey now the two shot range just isn't as comfortable but my luck continues once again I do get it into the yellow health so I'm able to hit that two shot range and I'm at full health going into the raid boss Snorlax I try to do a cheeky turn one flamethrower here maybe I can fish for the burn proc and of course I'm gonna fail and from there we start trading blows now this one looks like it's gonna be really close but maybe slightly in my favor but when I do get it low enough it goes for rest from here I got three turns to do my best and with leftovers and the fact that snore is significantly weaker than body slam I could just outpace it here I think but Typhlosion has the loaded dice ready. I get another crit, this time with Return, and that just kind of ensures that I can get past this menace. And now we've made it farther than we have been so far. But that's as far as I needed to go. As far as the Charizard goes, he only has Wing Attack, and that's just not gonna cut it today, bud. I have the super effective Thunder Punch, and this thing isn't nearly as tanky as Blastoise, so it's a very comfortable two-shot range, and the whole time I'm just healing a little bit back with Leftovers, so I'm in a great position. And that's because in the back, he's trying to hide his little pathetic Venusaur, and you know what's waiting on it. It's one more flamethrower, and that's it. That's the run over. 
Now, if we were still counting time at red, Typhlosion would finish with two resets and a time of one hour, 14 minutes, and 25 seconds. Now, I think Typhlosion is a very good Pokemon, but I'm not conceited. I'm not blind. I know that my improvement to playing the game is why this is like a six minute improvement over Tyranitar. I don't think Typhlosion is the number one Pokemon or anything like that. I just think I'm continuing to get better at the game, but I do think that Typhlosion is a top tier pick overall, and that's mainly because that early access to the elemental punches, and when you factor in the extra coverage that Hidden Power Ice gives you, it makes it, it's really strong. Now keep in mind there are two rare candies that I don't pick up. I've never really needed to, but if you wanted to make this one consistent, you would pick those up, you'd maybe do a few extra battles, maybe find the highest level trainers that you could find, maybe get an extra level or two, skip using the rare candies on Bruno, and you would come into this fight level 73, level 75, and I think it would be a very consistent and easy fight. Now overall, I'm always very impressed when the Pokemon doesn't have to grind any extra, can go straight to red and just take it out. So Typhlosion, I already I already liked it a lot, especially with Pokemon Go, the Shadow Typhlosion. I already liked Typhlosion a lot. I love the fire starters, but seeing it do this well in the run just, you know, kind of gives me that much more respect for it. But I think that's about all I have for you guys. I don't have a tier list for Crystal yet. I'm waiting till I get one more run and really kind of get things under my belt because it's going to look wonky because pretty much the latest run that I do for a while, I feel like it's going to be the best run and it's not going to look right because I do think Ho-Oh would still outclass Typhlosion if I had the knowledge I have now if that makes sense. So no tier list just yet. I want to get a little better at the game. We want to get a good good sample size and as always special thanks to my channel members. I appreciate the support and like always I don't have the names up here because I'm getting kind of far ahead in videos because I got some stuff I need to do in real life. I'm gonna have to take some time off and I don't want to miss a week of videos. Hopefully you understand and if you made it this far in the video and you aren't subscribed you probably should because I need more people that make it this deep into the video and you're hearing my voice right now. Those are my favorite kind of people. They get that viewer retention up and that's a very important metric uh, for channel growth. But that's enough about all that boring stuff. I think that's about all I have for you. I'm hoping this one won't be too long, but I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out being like 40 minutes like always. But that's all for me, guys. I will catch you on the next one. Bye.